Blossomer works really good. Hey, Mike, look, we finally got our onion blossomer from Lily and Vernon. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So you onion blossomed a bowling ball? Yep. And I see a caulking gun uh -huh. and, and a shoe. Of course. Right. Blossoming makes everything taste great. Yeah. Well, just about anything can be a pleasing side dish with lamb or Salisbury steak. Doesn't everything just look delicious? Mm -hmm. Everything looks blossomed. Is that <laughs> my wallet there? You bet. Blossomed and batter dipped. Yummy. Right, well, we'll be right back. Doesn't it all just look so good? Ooh, I want to try some plunger. <gasps> plunger, yum. Hmm, now oh, this is a blossom worth eating. Now try it with my delicious dipping sauce. Mm. Hey, oh. looks good. What you got there? Your head. Oh, it, you, you blossomed and fried my head? Oh, lighten up. You didn't even miss it. Try it with my dipping sauce, Tom. But you blossomed and fried my... Hey, is that peppercorn ranch? Uh -huh. mm. Oh, Pearl's calling. Mike, Crow, Snack, I've done it. This experiment will thrust me to the highest ranks of mad science. All done. We've soldered tiny electrodes to all the speech and motor sensors of Bobo's brain. It will either kill him or allow us to control his every motion. Oh, and it's portable. All controlled by this universal remote we got at Target for nine bucks. Here, try it out, girl. Oh, let's start with a few simple motor skills. Um, a left hand twitch. Oh. A nice knee jerk. Oh. Oh. Oh, try the self-strangling macro I put in there. Lovely. Uh, okay, and now my favorite. Perform a stupid soft shoe grab cattle prod applied to self while singing tonight from the charming libretto of West Side Story. No, oh, please, it'll kill me the tonight. Tonight. Try it out, Mike. All you need is a universal learning remote with the control code for Bobo found in the manual. Officer Crunky! <laughs> okay, Pearl, got it. Go ahead there, Crow. Okay, let's see. Sanyo 02, Hitachi 19. Ah, here it is, Bobo. Press 14. 14. Okay. 14. Yeah. Enter. Okay, what should we do? Oh, I got it, Mike. Come here, come here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, okay. Right, right. Enter. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, Pearl. Can't help myself. <laughs> Man, that must hurt. Oops, sorry, great guy. All involuntary muscular action. <laughs> now to involuntarily bring Mike and the bots down. <laughs> it works. Yay. Okay, great. Now I'll just have Bobo tie up Pearl and Perfect. Brain Guy right. so they can't get... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what? Ah, I hit the sleep function. No, oh, Mike! Mike. <laughs> Good one, Nelson. You almost got me. I have a little work to do, but first, let's get the monkey all nice and punished. Pluck all nose hairs with rusty pliers. 
brain dead? Let's send these guys track of the moon bees. It stars nobody and features nothing. I hope you gag on it. Oh. Uh, well, we tried anyway. Hey, at least we got my head to snack on. Yeah, I guess. Oh, we'll have to bring it into the theater, though. We got movie time! Don't forget my delicious dipping sauce. Oh, I have a feeling these cinema shares won't give us a very good return. <laughs> Inside Al Gore's head. Speaking of. Here is one of the tiny men who operate the dials on your stove. Quite an elaborate setup just to peep on his neighbor. Do you really want your movie to start this way? <gasps> Some burnt toast is heading toward the sun! Who wants a light bulb? Light bulb here, come on. Two dollars, got a light bulb. Uh, come on now, Earl. You said you were just gonna make a short announcement about parking. This is a lousy version of... Hey, 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 hey. Ginger Baker of the tribe. <laughs> Icarus, pull out, Icarus! Bring your 4x4 four four down to the track of the Moon Beast. How green was my credits? Are they hoping a uh, jackrabbit will just pop up and spice up their credits? I see Brian Hamill is still photographer. I thought he got laid off. <laughs> Brian. Man, the producer got the hell assisted out of him. Oh, Fitzhugh Emerson III of the moon based Emersons. I got a creepy feeling that this was filmed at the Spawn Ranch. Hawkeye Pierce returns to the MASH unit. Yeah, I got a finger for you, William. Ooh. What a lonely beat for a motorcycle cop. Frank there is a child of the universe, no less than the trees. Please put your dick ash out in the ashtray. Thank you. Where's the crowd? And where the hell did my ramp go? Movie's mostly him winterizing his bike. We're gonna have to practice some zen in the art of watching motorcycle maintenance. We got that bike cheap from Gary Busey. Okay, why did he bury his shirt? Dug up a toilet seat? Look at that. Huh. Ah, he's in boot camp for umpire training. It's a tusk from a miniature pachyderm. Ha, a rare sliver of concrete from the Eisenhower epoch. I have found an inscription. It says, Fiesta wear. It's a dull razor! <laughs> Sorry to be so naughty. We're just bad lands, I guess. I saw the stones here, man. Ah! Queen Latifah. Hi, Paul. Johnny. Surprise guest star, Don Ho. Johnny Longbow. Johnny Longbone? Johnny, what? Sorry for rushing the Halloween season. It was too good to resist. What? You can come out now. Show's over. 
ha, ha, pointless confusing pranks are fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Better known on campus as Bud Keeler. And Bud Janet Keeler? Price. Bud Hi, Keeler. do forgive us. <laughs> These, I'm afraid, are two of my students at the university. Unfortunately, I'm saddled with them for my summer field course, just as you were saddled with me. Stop touching each other! All right. You decided to switch from anthropology to mineralogy at the graduate level. <laughs> man, remember? Until that point, I thought you had a fair degree of sense. Oh, man, that was great. Was it you that made that god-awful sound? That was me, I'm afraid. <laughs> he also does bird calls, mm -hmm. but don't get him started. Janet, like I keep telling you, an anthropology major these days should have more than one talent. <laughs> That's a talent? Bird calls? <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed my outfit from Doc Severinsen. I'm Kathy Nolan. Paul. Paul Carlson. Get into the lineup. Good. Don't tell me you're a student. Miss Nolan's doing a picture story in the religious customs of the tribes around here, especially my own people. That's why Bud happened to have a ceremonial mask. <laughs> really, my idea. I borrowed the mask from the collection at the reservation to do some mood shots on location out here. But when we were heading back and I saw you and Professor Salinas explained you were a friend, well, I'm afraid the bright idea of using it for a practical joke and getting some shots of your reaction was my idea. Thanks, I'm glad to know. Knowledge equals gladness. I'm afraid we got more reaction than I bargained for. <laughs> I, I won't use the shot. That's a promise. Am I forgiven? Only if you stop explaining it. Of course, Miss Nolan. Kathy, to my friends. We are friends. Look, what do you want from me? We are, Kathy. Puller of ineffectual pranks. Uh, we were just on our way to Professor Salinas' place at the reservation. He's promised us an authentic Indian supper. Won't you join us? Uh, I'd like to, if it's, if it's all right with uh, Johnny Longbow. It's all right with me. No problem at all. Just follow my car. I'll explain the joke more at lunch. Um, why do you call him Johnny Longbow? Well, it's his Indian name. His tribal one. Like Wahoo McDaniels. It translates warrior's bow that reaches long to its mark. Oh, is he seeing anyone? Actually, he handles a bow like one of his ancestors. I approve. The impact on the moon has sent off a shower of fragments mixed with pieces of the asteroid. More TV, anyone? Some of these small fragments will enter Earth's atmosphere tonight, but they will undoubtedly explode into nothing more than a harmless shower of tiny meteorites, according to NASA officials. The greatest concentration of the recent meteor shower over the southwest region of the United States. This meteor shower will be, however, quite harmless, according to the statement from NASA, and likely to provide nothing more than a spectacular sight in the sky. I'm Kent Brockman. And that's the story of the awesome collision on the moon today. This is Gary Kanan from our new center in Albuquerque. <laughs> Gary's a great guy. I didn't schedule a meteor shower as part of the evening entertainment at the reservation. But it should be quite a sight. Well, this is a great meal, Professor. That's a great stew. Mm. What's in it? Oh, a lot of things. Rattlesnake, Velveeta. Chicken, corn, <laughs> green peppers, mm. chili, onions. Uh, Hair. Well, it's an old recipe around here. to get some night shots of this area. I'll give you a night shot of an area. Well, if you don't mind me tagging along, I know a few great spots. But they're pretty far away. So we'd have to go there naked. Well, thank you for guiding me, or I would have walked in any random direction. Hey, they're going for night shots at 12 noon. Yeah. It's a Grand Fury, about 1973. Nice. That is a lizard. Your girl. Oh. Cool. Sorry. Things like that scare me. Yes, I know. You get used to lizards here. They're quite common. That's why tribes in this area have so many legends about lizards. Ask me to tell one. Ask me to tell one. Ask me to like, tell one. Like uh, what, for instance? Oh. Such as the story of a uh, lizard and coyote, for instance. Oh, boy. Hunker down. In the days before there were men on Earth. Sounds like it's going to be the uh, Navajo version of Genesis. <laughs> Ignore him, Professor. I'd like to hear the story. I just want some peyote. Well, 
It'll have no effect on your grades. <laughs> I don't expect it to. I just like to hear it. Well, one day, before man walked on Earth, Lizard and Coyote were having an argument about what shape man would take. They fought and died the end. Lizard won the argument. And Coyote battled Roadrunner. They finally Runner. agreed that man's hands would be shaped like lizards. Four fingers and a thumb. Hey, that's right. <laughs> Was that the end of the story? <laughs> Not quite. Not even close. Coyote drove a hard bargain. He agreed that man's hands would be shaped like lizards rather than his paws. But only, only... If he retained the film rights. If man would be mortal. Uh-huh. Do you know Billy Jack? I never again try to be like Lizard. And so they called it Maze. Stop talking, Johnny Longbone! You can see you quite a distance up here. She's wearing a frosted denim onesie. Although we've got a lot more air pollution than we used to. Since we ate Johnny's stew. That's Albuquerque over there. Before electricity. And that road leads to Santa Fe, northeast. And the river's over there. Paul, where are we exactly? I'm telling you. What, you want longitude and latitude? I'm sorry. We're on the top of Sandia Crest. It's 10,678 feet up or down. Does that affect my thighs? Depending on where you are and your point of view. No, I've never had one of those. Yeah, I'd like to come up here at night. And hawk loogies on passing cars. It's one of my favorite places on Earth. After Branson. It's always so peaceful, so quiet. So hot pants. Sorry, sorry. Somehow above the rest of my life. That's a pretty low bar, really, though. Well, they're not making out yet. I guess Will Chamberlain's in town or something. Right on schedule. Johnny, are you mouthing something? Tree. Paul, what's wrong? What is it? They're heading for the Ovum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've used that during meteor showers. Jeez. Okay, yeah, Paul, the meteors are gone, Paul. Paul, are you all right? What happened? She gets off the ground saying what happened a lot. Meteorite. A lunar meteorite. A meteorite? A lunar meteorite? We heard about it earlier on TV. Yes, but here? Oh, we're right in the area where they're due to fall. They have every right to kill us. I guess we can consider ourselves lucky. I mean, soon I'll be able to consider myself having gotten lucky, right? What's the matter? You've got a scratch or something on your forehead. That's where my ear used to be. I had it moved. I don't feel anything. Oh, no, don't touch it. Let me do that. Well, words every guy wants to hear. I must have bumped it when we hit the dirt. Uh, you don't have to scrub it. Let me clean it up anyway. See, you were bleeding. <laughs> That's nothing. Let's celebrate by littering. Hey, Kathy. Look at that. It's that tissue I just threw. Hey, hi, tissue. What ancient civilization could have left this motorcycle here? Dun, 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 That'll make a great souvenir. My own personal moon rock. <gasps> moon rock? Oh, wow. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? No, but you just reminded me. I'm supposed to go into town tomorrow. There's a NASA exhibit at the university, and I'm supposed to cover it. That's a great idea. Um, without you. We'll go to the exhibit, then we'll have some supper. Then a dab of sex. Then we'll go out afterwards. In, just in case the moon rock hasn't cooled off. We'll just give it a little time out. Well, it's not cool and now I have no plan. It's cool enough to travel now. It'd be cooler if it played the bongos or wrote poetry. <laughs> Have you got a first aid kit in that bag? A few things, why? I'm still worried about that cut on your head. It could get infected. If you keep pawing at it, Look, yeah. I don't live far from here. 
And I've got all kinds of antiseptic in my medicine cabinet <laughs> at my place. Dozens, no, hundreds of antiseptics. Your place? My place. I call it antiseptic manor. Fine. Your place, then. Not his place, fornicators. New Puffs Plus with Strontium 90. I share an efficiency apartment with a bunch of other guys. I did that with my mind. Okay, now watch how hard I hit the wall. Should I leave the bike running so I can take you right home afterwards? He's got a nice two-car living room. Mm -hmm. Both look so furtive and uncomfortable. It must be love. It's one big French press up there. I gather nobody's home. My mother's in Europe. She travels a lot. All this and he lives with his mother? Wow. Oh, do you hang up every centerfold you get? Why do you keep a picture of Army Archard on your nightstand? When will our eyes meet? When will I see you? Where's your hair coloring station? Yep, this is my corner fireplace. Now that the real Paul Carlson has stood up, what do you think? You can sit back down. I won't be needing the services. I think you've spent a lot of your life being lonely. No, I got my chat rooms. When your parents are divorced, you get used to it. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Um, could you at least kiss me first? Tom Thurman. Hey, his name is Ty. Ty? Short for Tyrannosaurus. Sounds like something in a museum. It is, usually. But he's got the night off. Ty looks a lot like a dinosaur. Or like the dragon the Indians call Avenue. Thank you for introducing me to your friend. Well, I, I hope he didn't frighten you. That scratched the maggot collection, I guess. Paul. You're a lizard-loving freak, and I gotta go. It's us I'm really frightened about. You're an icky couple. Kathy. Let me explain by augering my tongue into your mouth. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Sorry for rushing the Halloween season, Mike. It was just too good to resist. <laughs> you can come out now. <laughs> Count Dracula, uh, at your service. Hi. <laughs> do forgive us. <laughs> we also do bird calls. Haru, haru. That's a talent? Uh, bird calls? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, uh... It was my idea, Mike. I made the mask earlier to do some mood shots on location here in the SOL. <laughs> but when we decided to break for a beverage, Servo saw you here and explained to me that you were up here on the bridge eating pea pods. <laughs> and since we had the mask, well, I'm afraid the bright idea of using the mask for a practical joke and then subsequently documenting your reaction to our practical joke on film was my idea. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm afraid I got a little more reaction than I bargained for. I won't use the shot, Mike. That, that's a promise. <laughs> look, look I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. I really am. It's just that, that since we had the mask, it was, you know, hard to resist doing, you know, a little practical joke there and rushing the... Uh, Rushing the uh, Halloween season and all. <laughs> I mean, I didn't expect such a huge reaction, so, you know, and uh, 
it was my idea, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really sorry, Mike. I, I won't use the film, I promise. Really, really, Mike, please forgive me. I just got so much more than I bargained for. I, uh, <laughs> please, Mike, I beg you, I'll never rush the Halloween season again. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> just, you know, mood shots, practical jokes. I, made them. I hate myself. Rock served on a bed of garbage bags. Smile, Paul's ass. Paul! Paul, what happened? I keep seeing a woman with a yellow shrink-wrapped area. Wow. I guess I blacked out. Um, excuse me, you African-American doubt. I'm okay. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. I just need some fresh air. No, I'm trapped in a loveless one-day relationship. What is that? Ah, ah, we, we stumbled into an Eagles concert. It's a nightmare! Uh, ah. Shelly Duvall. My boy's been getting froggy. I've been smoking too damn much. He stole Robin Gibbs' head. Singing songs to the sun that's rising, rhyming words I cannot touch. Like purple and orange. Oh, I've been wandering in circles with just a guitar in my hand. Yeah. Playing one too many bar rooms and drinking more than I can stand. Marsha Brady on backup. California Lane. Won't you bring your love to me? Get it yourself. Gravy. Add flavor to my meat. Uh, I am going to throw up if he sings one more bar. Oh. You're a lot better off if we take you home. Like now. Hey, look, behind Longbone, there's Waldo. Waldo. I'm hung out in Chicago. With a California mind I forced my skull right through my face And refused to wash my stringy hair Oh, no, the snaggletooth folk rocker followed them home just a guitar in my hand Playing all them funky bar rooms And drinking more than I can stand I started a joke California lady won't you shorten your dress for me? California lady. Uh -huh. She's the one I want to see, my California lady. Who? My California lady. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Who? My California lady. Oh! The original Smashing Pumpkins. I'm just not sure. Leaving him alone. It's the best way. No care is the best care. Paul's still learning a lot of things. Such as? Such as how to accept help from other people. And, um, that's it. He's used to doing things by, for himself. Of himself. At himself. He's been a loner a long time. It's not easy to change. Even so. Tell you what. You finish crocheting your dress. If Paul calls me during the night... I'll roll over and say, what? I'll call you. I'll come pick you up. How's that? I'll buy that. You know, her outfit started out as a baby blanket, then she just added a bra to it. By the way, my car runs on green peppers, corn, chicken, onions. And if Paul calls me first? Yes. Hey, interest rates go up? Well, I don't know. What? Uh, California lady. Why did I switch to mineralogy? Nice place. No atmosphere, though. <laughs>
opens its curtain and immediately gets hit by Skylab. Man, he's out of shape. Drawing back the curtain shouldn't be that much work. Close the curtains. I gotta get up early tomorrow and eat roaches. I'm the Jim Morrison King. You sure gave that lizard a lot of headroom. Maybe it's a trampoline in there. Oh, man, I feel like I listened to 70s folk rock last night. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm here for the misbegotten. Mm, I should do another rep with the curtains. Maybe the lizard would be interested in my chest. Get back to sleep either. What do you want to do? Well, I, I need to induce vomiting, so here goes. California lady. All by myself, don't want to be. Thing. Get down from... Oh. Filmed through chocolate milk. Dennis the Menace's dad really hit the skids. Oh, no. Hmm, what haven't we seen in this movie yet? Oh, right, a scrawny, drunken bowler's ass cheeks. Thank you. Hmm, I think I threw a cigarette butt down here last week. He has an M.A. in bowling from Duke. That concludes the national news. Now turning to the news of the local yeah. Albuquerque Is that area. Dick Gregory? 25 people were stranded this afternoon for over four hours on the Sandia Cable Lift. Ah, good. The bigger couch is finally here. Due to a severe thunder and lightning storm, which swept through the Sandia Range at approximately 2 o'clock this afternoon. Can we have more annoying ambient sound, please? Seven people did request hospitalization. Ah, I miss my mom. Oh, go to hell, Sid! I told you what was going to happen when you came home again from that bowling alley drunk. I'm going to bed. And you can just sleep it off out there. Go to hell. No, that would mean letting him in the house. Yeah, I'll go back to the bowling alley, sleep in the ball return. Who is there? The paper boy coming for his Christmas mm. tip. Don't take my face grease. I left my rosin bag at the bowling alley. Damn, my underwire popped out. Ouch. Express delivered her tomato bisque under the door. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> uh, there goes another one. Man, do I tear through the husbands. I picked at it. We'll be right back. See? Thanks, Kramer, for bringing the professor. Giddy up. Hello, Mac. Bone, how are you? What happened here? A killing. A messy one. He did it. The medical examiner's report being phoned in? I'll make sure I'll have a copy of your desk when you get back at me. Good. Let me have copies of the other reports, too. All of them. Yes, sir. Fine. Check in the house and see if you can lend a hand. 
Yep, just call me Lieutenant Half a Beef. Now I'll tell you why, exactly why I asked you here. I was wondering. It sounded urgent. It's because I need an opinion from you. You like this outfit? My field is in medicine. You know that, Mac. I know. Well, what then? One problem with being a cop is that eventually you think you've seen everything. Well, this morning I found out I was wrong. This is different. Uh, which one is him? Ah, uh, pick whichever one you want. The woman had a weak heart, and what she saw when she opened the door apparently finished her. There's no report of any violence on her. But take a look at the man. He is scrumptious. What kind of thing would cut up someone like that? Martin Yan? Could have been a mountain lion, Mac. No, Jenny. Not that easy. I knew you'd let me down. I'm going to show you something one of my men found at the back of the house. Snuggle up and come with me. Kill Harris must have tripped over the garden hose and grabbed at the side of the house for support. Then I dressed a pencil as a cop. Uh, take a break. I'll uh, check things here. You're right. Someone's testing paint colors. That wasn't made by a mountain lion. That mark was made by a human hand. Well, I would agree with you except for one thing. You're wrong. You tell me what kind of human makes a footprint like that. Now you get the picture, Jeff? You see now why I patronize you? When I got that radio call, I thought someone had made a real goof. But when I saw Harris... I said, hello, Harris. I had to believe it. Harris was killed by some kind of thing that... That killed him. ...was nearly seven feet tall. Had hands with claws on the fingers. Spats on the top hat. And walked on feet like I've never seen before. No way, they were my feet. <laughs> well, that's why I had to bring you here, General. To make me look competent by comparison. Now, you're right, this is not some kind of medical problem. I don't know what kind of problem it is. It's hard, that's all I know. You're an anthropologist, Johnny. I thought, well, just maybe. You'd anthropologize. You might be able to help us with this. Well, I can't tell you. About my stew. I've seen a track like that before. Where? In a museum. A fossil track. Several million years old. You want to throw in a verb anywhere, Johnny? Have your men made a plastic cast of the track? Hmm. We might get a better answer from the paleontology department at the university. Or the meat department at Ralph's. The department head, Dietz. He's a friend of mine. Let's go, now. The casting should be ready. J.C. Penny hooker wear for the casual hooker at work, rest, or play. Hey, I'm wearing terry cloth. You guys need anything absorbed? Wee, la 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 la. <laughs> Wee. Huh. Wake up. Come on, it's Pink Day. Wake up. There's another meteor headed for your skull. I've decided to make breakfast for us while you hit the shower. I'm going to make pink eggs for breakfast. <laughs> Wee. Paul! The Iguana Redemption. I agree with Professor Salinas. Your casting here is that of the left hind ah. foot of some form of reptile, some very, very large lizard. I still can't believe that there are lizards that big in New Mexico or anywhere else for that matter. Sorry, Pat McCabe, you're wrong about that. Thanks, Brigham Young. There is a lizard we call Varnus comodensis. Uh, there's some photos of him over in the paleontology lab. He's a who? Who grows to be all of 10 feet long. Mm -hmm. He's quite a fellow. Mm -hmm. The Indonesians call him the Komodo dragon. Gee, is it possible that one of these lizards is here? Or somehow? I don't think so. And if there were one somehow on the loose, it wouldn't be what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. The Komodo dragon walks on four feet. This scene is dying. Indicates a lizard that can walk upright. Some form of reptile. Yes. Closely related to the Tyrannosaurus rex. T-Rex has the classic pear shape. Some describe me as an ambulatory mound of suet. Thanks, Jenny. But how in the hell am I going to tell the commissioner or anyone down at City Hall? 
A man was killed on the doorstep of his own home last night by some kind of dinosaur. Thanks for the stereotype music. Meet us running, lady. It's the Johnny Longbone, Johnny Longbone team. Bobby Sherman looks on. How do you feel today, Paul? Oh, a lot better than yesterday. Oh, who cares? Hi. Hi. Hey, they're pretty good. But you should see Johnny work with the boat. Whoa. Our scholarly anthropologist here was the conference archery champ in college. I've seen his trophy. In the locker room? <laughs> How about a little demonstration for our camp? <laughs> All right. Come on, Johnny Longbow. I'd like to see you live up to your name. hi -oh, Get the kids out of the room. <laughs> I'd swipe these from that Indian while he was crying about the garbage. <laughs> Johnny made everything himself. His clothes, his car. Even the arrowheads. Everything is authentic Indian. I thought everything was Archie. Now look at this better stuff from Galleons. Okay, Johnny. Here's some toilet paper. Now let's really impress the lady from New York. Let's share him. <laughs> That's right, walk in front of me so I can see the VPL. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, long bone, Johnny, Johnny, long bone. Tonight on uh, SOL. Lower, please, Mike. Okay, uh, tonight on uh, <coughs> uh, Tonight on SOL's Legends of Rock. Okay, good. The tragic story behind the band that played California Lady. The band that played California Lady began as a duo featuring the fish lip guy and the Eskimo. They developed their sound playing this kind of music in hard scrabble bars before a growing circle of fans. It wasn't until they added the friendly-looking backup singer that the band that played California Lady finally hit it big with California Lady. The pressures of success were huge, and the fish-lipped guy who took on the public role of creative genius began to take refuge in drinking and a new circle of fast friends as he and the Eskimo drifted apart. That summer, the band that played California Lady played before nearly 300,000 at Watkins Glen, New York, sharing a bill with Wet Willie and Toots and the Maytals. Backstage, though, the fish lip guy's drinking was beginning to get out of hand. Creative tensions mounted and a haze of alcohol served only to cover up the Eskimos' increasing drug use. It was a hopeful sign when the friendly-looking backup singer checked into a rehab clinic to have her blood replaced, but the fish lip guy's out-of-control womanizing led the Eskimo into an ever more deadly spiral of drug use and drink. Drug-addled recording sessions produced the band that played California Lady's follow-up album, the more melodic Rhode Island Lady, but it failed to crack the charts as the band that played California Lady's audience did not follow them into this new territory. By this time, the drugs, booze, and womanizing had begun to replace the music. Friends were troubled as an opportunity to open for Brewer and Shipley on a world tour went by the boards when the Eskimo slipped into a long-term alcoholic coma. The fish lip guy turned increasingly to booze, drugs, womanizing, and out of control gambling, and the band that played California Lady was no more. Happily, the last year has seen a reunion, and a new generation of fans have discovered the magic that is the band that played California Lady. Okay, thank you. That's a wrap, the and we have the movie time. Return to the drinking, drugs, Mike. gambling, womanizing tax fraud. <laughs> How'd it go? Uh, I think I pulled it off. Uh. You, you kids should clear out. There's gonna be Open. some blood. Point to a major organ, Paul. Ow, corn shrapnel. Oh, I'm 
sick. I can't do the dangerous trick anymore. Yes. Don't wreck the target. Paul! I think he overdid it by coming out here today. Better get him home, Kathy. I'll send over some stew. It's a fallout shelter neighborhood. <laughs> You're not talking me out of it this time. I'm staying. Oh, great. I mean, oh, great. You need looking after. Did you take the aspirins? Yes, Master. Well, that's one of those relationships. <laughs> there. That's better. Dark and restful. You should be able to sleep now. I'm going to go play some Nine Inch Nails. If you should need anything, I'll be right in the den, okay? Okay. But try not to need anything, because I don't like being bugged by you. California me. I'll give my love to you. Man, they could shoot a Fiona Apple video here. Oof. It's a hard room to clash with, but she manages to do it. <laughs> He's got an autographed picture of Elvis Costello and Dean Acheson. She turned down that book. Ah, see, the betting is what's keeping him awake. Look at that. I'll just settle in with a bound copy of TV Guide. And now, from all of us here at Track of the Moon Beast, good night. Look over there, it's Cherry before she gained weight. Mm. Hmm, I wonder how he's dying in there. Let's see. How to make things pinker. Good night, Keith. I'm swimming in a pool! Oh, no. I can't get enough shots of him sick and sweaty in bed. I'm sick and I'm buff. Hey, he's got his own confessional. He's got a severe allergy to shirts. And you could tuck several more Pauls in those pajamas. But don't. <laughs> Mom, Mom, did Santa get here yet? Look, she's sleeping so pinkfully. This film is lit with a spelunker's headlamp. Mm. Punk, ow! Louis Anderson sits bath. I'm gonna do a quick can opener, then I can go back to bed. Sounds like Lurch is playing in the backyard. When did we switch to realtor's walkthrough point of view? Clonk, ow! Drink me in, world. I'm freshly oiled and ready to rock. Shirtless enough. I'm gonna take off my skin. That, that's just a picture of a moon. Yeah, the moon backed out of this movie at the last minute. <laughs> I'll open it. Uh, okay, then. I'll open it. I'll open it. Uh, just a minute. Hello? No. Are we invited to your movie? You're in for two. How about you, Earl? Yeah, I'm going to stay for two. Okay, how many cards? Some uh, casino started off on a modest I'll scale. I'll never win this game. I'll never win this game, friend. That's yes, it's Gabe Kaplan's poker camp for kids. Okay. Two for you and two winning cards for the big winner of the night. Okay? Don't touch the side of the tent. Now it'll leak. Let's party! Woohoo! Norman Rockwell. 
Uh, whose arm is this? Anyone want to claim this arm? Arm? No. Paul. Paul. Where do those leftover body parts in the fridge come from? It's our 24-hour anniversary. When I woke up and couldn't find you anywhere in the house, I got so worried. What are you doing out here? I'm stuck to the chaise lounge. It was so warm in my room. So I killed a tent full of old guys. I couldn't get back to sleep. But it must have been chilly out here last night. You could have caught cold. And there's a shrill pink lump next to me. All you men are alike. Sometimes you act like such big babies. You spit up formula all over me Come on. and... I'll make you some breakfast. He was still alive when we found him. Ooh, the Eight of Diamonds? Yeah. I fold. The man was pretty far gone in Chuck. But he did manage to say something about a lizard. A big lizard. A big lizard that walked like a man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fine. Seems to me I've heard that expression before. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Something your friend Dietz said about a dinosaur. A Tyrannosaurus. Actually, a Polosaurus. Well, now there have been discoveries of supposedly extinct creatures dating back to the dinosaur age. But screw you, man. Ancient life forms that are still alive today. Okay, I'm going gray, but I'm not an ancient life form. Maybe there is a dinosaur still alive. Hey, Steve. Up in the hills. Hurry up, Slowpoke. Hmm? I want to get you off my hands. Then your lady can take over. Johnny, you're one hell of a guy. <laughs> White man, speak with forked tongue. No, quick, let me write that down. Hurry up, will you? I got other things to do. I have to name stew ingredients. What happened here? Where's Ty? Ty is with Jacket. I don't know. He must have broken out the night before last. Something scared him. It was my serial shirtlessness. Maybe the meteor shower. I'm going to pretend you didn't even say that. Is this the meteorite you found? Small personal moon rock. Your own personal moon rock. Funny thing, I've looked through every text I have on mineralogy. Well, the one I have. And I can't find anything like it. Nor can I find a decent deodorant. Of course, I haven't run a series of tests on it. Do you mind if I borrow your moon rock for a couple of days? Sure, take the key. Go ahead. I was going to take it to the geology lab anyway. Mm. Maybe they can find the answer to it. I can't. But right now, we're going to take you over to St. Joe's. Maybe they can find an answer to what's been bugging you. Left word to your witness office. Thanks. How do you feel? Not bad. Good. While you're waiting, I might as well do an errand near here. I'll be back in a little while. No sweat. I'm going to go get my bone longing. Then it's not just some kind of error in printing, Mr. Hamill. Definitely not. Mm. I remember looking at the originals on that roll myself. Mother and I looked at it. What you see is what happened. I can't explain it, but it's not our fault or the fault of the film. Thank you, R. Crumb. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Never. And I've been in this business for years. Well, a year and a half. I'm Dr. Sutton. Would you come this way, please? Yeah. I've looked at your x-rays. <laughs> really we don't usually discuss them with patients. <laughs> but this isn't a usual case, Mr. Carlson. We'll let you in on your illness this time. This is the normal situation, just to give you an idea. It's a person with a grapefruit in their head. And this is the one we took of you. Your brain is the size of a chickpea. What does it mean? What's happened to me? You've been hit by a small particle of matter of some kind. <laughs> Not enough to cause any pain because of the high speed, but it is there. We also found some stray Q-tips. Then something's inside my head? Yes. Not much, but... It's not uncommon. There have been cases where servicemen have survived with small particles of shrapnel embedded in their brains. This wasn't shrapnel, Doctor. Mm. So I understood. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. A meteorite, you said? I asked you, was it a meteorite? What happens now? Now? Mostly you die. Now we're going to keep you here for a few more days for observation. We're going to take more x-rays. If that area doesn't clear up, 
Oh. We're going to do something about it, surgically. We'll do a hatectomy. I made these photos several years ago when I was doing research for my doctorate. I'm a doctor of stew. They just might have a connection to your killer lizard. Yeah, that's what I call it. Gee. Well, at this point, I'd sell for anything in the way of a lead. Well, let's see him. Show me that killer lizard. <laughs> this is the first scene in a deer hide painting I was shown. What kind of camera was he using? Not many people have seen it. It's something like 400 years old. What's happening to the Indian in the painting? Oh, he's in the cupboard. It's the beginning of the story. He's being struck by a light that comes down from the sky. Our key grip dropped it. Well, what happened to him? See for yourself. Hmm? Whatever struck him from the sky changed him completely from human form. And let's see, just more of the same. Some pictures from when I went to Cancun. Hmm. He became a demon lizard monster. Wow. Arrows had no effect on him. Well, how'd they get rid of this demon lizard? They didn't, but he died anyway. Kind of a dumb legend, really. It was consumed by fire. But where the flames came from, nobody knows. How do you light your own back on fire? Surprise! It was me running the slides. That's a mystery. And it's still a mystery. After 400 years. Now I'm over here. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I'm boring and my slideshow eats. <laughs> it's only an Indian legend. Part of our tribal culture. I know, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But it's the one thing that ties in with what the fisherman said. He said, I got one. He said the camp was attacked by a lizard that walked like a man. Michael Douglas? Sheriff, there you now, go. I want your help, Mac. My garage door opener doesn't work. Come on, I can get a free hot lunch at my kid's school. Well, we've got the place to ourselves. I had to close up early on my authority, and I hope this proves something. I haven't solved the case in years. Well, not a minute. I never thought I'd see the day when I try to solve a case of Indian superstition. Johnny, you mind? We are just about to find out. I am gonna beat the stuffing out of you. Longbone goes into his windup. Should be somewhere. Just about. Would you finish a sentence? Here. What was that? I don't really know. Let me make up a quick legend here. My guess is that there's some... Peanut butter? Unusual element in this fragment oh. that synchronizes with that larger mass over there. Oh, that's the folk mass. They get more people. And it produces some kind of energy reaction. Let's just go eat. You mean it's energy or whatever it is? And they turn a human into a monster? You turn the man which into a meal. Just like in those... Werewolf tales? When there's a full moon in Transylvania? Johnny, I've known you for a long time. And you've got to be kidding. I wish I was kidding, Mac. This hair doesn't lie. I'm not. But there is an answer. But I think I know what it is. I copied from the Indian sitting next to me. And it makes me sick to think about it. Soon I'll be throwing up corn, green pepper, chicken, onions. If what you say is true. The Indians were here first? The x-rays. The way the meteorite reacted. And your Indian legend. Is meteor wrong, I'd say. <laughs> then there's something I've got to know from my own peace of mind. Granted, it's a small piece. Maybe rough, boss. He's right, Paul. Nobody knows what may happen. Except for Faith Popcorn. Then let's find out. How much time do I have? He's sundown in half an hour. We can go to the drive-in. The moon will be up an hour or so after that. Of course, that's just an old chubby white sheriff's legend. Before, before anything happens, I want to talk to Kathy. I'm sure that can be arranged. She's at the reservation. I'll phone her now. 
Call me Johnny Long, phone her at the reservation bone. Sheriff, will you give me a sponge bath? I hope they have boiled chicken and tapioca for lunch. You better give her some idea of what he might have to go through, just to prepare her. I'll try. He's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Captain, I'll just talk to you. Go in there. Just have to move Paul to another room. Why is he in there? Why are these policemen here? We're not sure what may happen to Paul after the moonrise. In fact, moving him here was his idea. But surely... Captain, this is the hospital. We can't afford to take any chances. We can't afford a boom mic. The moon is a strong effect on the earth. Look what it can do to the tide. And look what tide can do for stains. In Paul's case, it may trigger a whole set of changes. A temporary mutation. I want to see him. Now. Please. I've known him for eight hours. I think I deserve to see him. So how's the pretending you're not old going? His condition is so grave that he's confined to the ironing board. See, he's wearing his Doris Day PJs. I was dreaming and then suddenly Judith Light appeared over my bed. Big cockroach on the wall back there. Ooh, mama. Nice hallway, anyway. It's nearly sundown now. You shouldn't be in there much longer. All right, we'll get her. Kathy? Decouple and come on out. Kathy? Get the hose, officer. Um, Kathy, your skirt's on backwards. Thanks, Johnny. Can I take you home? As long as you're giving it away. No, thank you anyway. No trouble, miss. One of my men can take you home. The guys are lining up to take thank her you, home. Thank you, Captain. I'll be all right. I'd like to stay here at the hospital. Well, I could take you there. Um, look, I really want to take you somewhere. I'd almost unhooked my thumbs for her. Ladies and gentlemen, Seth Thomas, the best actor in the film. There he is again. How can you tell what time it is when those little sticks keep moving around like that? The moon is up now. I hope you're right. I don't. I hope you're wrong. Johnny, let's not fight. Well, we'll know in a few minutes. Something's happening. Let me see. He leaned his bed against the wall so they could vacuum. Uh, I'm sorry, nothing's happening. Never mind. <gasps> wow. He's transforming into the exact same person. <gasps> He's becoming Michael Antkian, and then Michael Nori, and then Michael Parks. turning into Roy Scheider. I'm ready to fight Captain Kirk. And now this from Pond's Cold Cream. Man, watching you turn into a moon beast was like watching paint dry. Are you supposed to put your head through that hole and get your picture taken? I don't know. Then it's true. Wearing underoos is fun. It was me. I killed all those people. That wasn't your fault, son. You're free to go. They won't convict you. They won't even blame you once the people know the facts. We'll soon have you back to normal, Paul. Tomorrow we'll be laughing about your killings. Do I need these now? No. But, Paul, did you have to leave your victims in humorous poses? Dr. Sutton's been in touch with NASA about your case. Hmm. Sending one of their top lunar scientists and one of the finest brain surgeons in the country. Maybe you could kill them. See that particle of meteor in the front part of your brain? It's causing the problem. Hmm. When it's removed, you won't have a thing to worry about. You can go back to leading your normal life. Oh, you're gonna kill me? <laughs> I'd like to see Kathy. And I'd like to see Marmaduke. Please. 
Ah, you horny serial killer, you. <laughs> Ack. Guess what? I'm a vicious killer, but it's okay. Huh. Well, we'll go stand out in the hall again. <sighs> yep, it's boinking guard for the losers. Guests of Track of the Moon Beast Flight TWA. Does anyone need a food cart to crap on? Would you fasten your seatbelts, please? We'll be landing shortly. When are we doing Albuquerque? In about 20 minutes. The captain got a message a few minutes ago. You and Dr. Lawrence will be met at the airport. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, may we get off first, please? We just have some hand luggage. That's also been arranged. You and Dr. Rizzo are to be given every cooperation. I must get to my Skitch Henderson convention. I must admit I was pretty startled last night when I got the call. So was I. I've never come up against a case anything like it. And I've had a few unusual ones, I must say. We've been worried at NASA all through the Apollo program about the possibility that something could cause a mutated life form. Nothing ever happened. Until now. Hey, did you hear about Nils Bohr and his wife? Oh, Paul. This is Dr. Rizzo. What up, bitch? Right, Paul. I'm going to be operating on you in just a little while. Glad to see you. What uh, happens now? We're going to make another set of x-rays just to check on the particle. The new set will give us an exact pinpointing of the spot in the left frontal lobe where it is. Then my doppelganger will give you an MRI. You removed the wrong leg! Oh, sorry. I thought you should see these right away, Doctor. I think we should look at these inside. Inside the topless bar on the corner. Yeah. What's the matter? I don't know. But I'll try to find out. Yes, he has confetti in his head. If you look at the difference in the affected areas... You'll learn nothing. You'll notice considerable change, Doctor. There's been a definite growth. In my bald spot. From the look of it, I'd say the particle in that young man's brain has disintegrated, and energy factors are spreading through his entire system. <laughs> no question about it. You're an idiot. Isn't there any way of well, neutralizing the effect, Doctor? Barking at us? What is he saying? That's your field, Dr. Lawrence. Is there something that can be done? We're dealing with a brand new unstable element here, one we've never seen before. So we give up. We don't know its characteristics, atomic structure, how it reacts. There's a chance. There's always a chance. Eventually, by doing research on the meteorite fragments you showed me... Can I have a glass of water? Well, we might learn how... One to base, Eagle One to base. Position of mobile personnel, reconnaissance robot unknown. Repeat, position unknown. Do not attempt I'm to- I'm right here, Crow. Oh, well maybe you know the position of the mobile personnel reconnaissance robot? Oh, you mean the little toy truck with the camera taped to it? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Okay, Mike's headed in for a nap and our cool. little friend is right behind. <laughs> <laughs> Soon, after all these years, we'll know what kind of pajamas our enigmatic pal wears. Yeah, and then we can kill him. <laughs> Uh, no, Crow. Oh, right, I was thinking of someone else. I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, switching to video feed from Recon Robot now. Aha, uh -huh. there he is. Yes. <laughs> oh, man, he's wearing a robe. What is he, Fred McMurray? Take off the damn robe, Mike. Oh, oh, look at this. Yeah, yeah, you're working out. <laughs> Good job, Grandpa. I don't know. Maybe we should turn this off. Oh, uh, no, no. It's his fault for not suspecting that we would build a sophisticated robot to spy in his undergarments. I guess it's... Oh. He's putting on a playlet of some sort with his stuffed animals. Uh, let's get a closer look. Though, though I can't be sure, it appears that the bear is upset with his position on the bed and is vituperating the young rabbit. I'll have more information on this as we... Forget about that. He's on the move. He's taking off his robe. Ooh, that's <laughs> it. That's it. Take it off, baby. Daddy, like. Dribble out of those Bobby Brooks. <laughs> oh, no. We're made. Oh, no. We're made. Oh. Switching off feed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, act natural. Act okay. natural. <laughs> <laughs> What? What, Mike? What is your problem? What are you accusing us of? Yeah. 
My robot, always stalking me while I sleep. <laughs> we'll be right back. Take off your robe! Shh, 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 oh, no, nope. sorry, nothing. Be cool, <laughs> really, be <cool>. sorry. <laughs> Then, the energy is released all at once. Guys. A form of explosion. Exactly. And when it happens, <laughs> your young friend will be consumed by well, it. Well, it was great meeting you, okay? I've got to talk to you now. Let's go. Where'd you get that anatomy chart? The demon in the tribal painting. We were lovers once. Self-consumed. That's a soccer team for you. One Indian mystery solved. Tonight on Sightings. Oh, Paul, why couldn't there be time for us? Well, how much time do you need? <laughs> there isn't. And that's why I'm going away. Now. Because you want to go out with me. If I'm going to die. Let it be as a blonde. I want to die looking like a man. In my feety pajamas. Not like a monster. Paul, don't. Ooh, where'd you get the second row of teeth? <laughs> Sorry, I regurgitated that mouse into your mouth. I need a few minutes. I have to squirm out of my old skin. I've got to get away from here. Get away where? Well, maybe they got an opening at Reptile Garden. I don't know. But I can't stand being locked up here again. In this coat closet. Will I see you again? Maybe, but I'll be blended into my background. I, I don't know. Just buy a gecko to remember me by. <laughs> I want you to go back to Dr. Sutton's office. Dr. Frank Sutton. Where I am? And if anybody asks... We barely know each other. Where I am. I want you to tell him I'm on the roof. That'll keep him busy enough for a few minutes. Long enough for me. I won't do it. Kathy. Okay, I will. Please. Do it for my sake. Wear pink hot pants to my funeral. Do it. Because we love each other. And they proceed to do it because they love each other. <laughs> oh, Paul. Why did this have to happen to you? The finest man in the world. <laughs> uh, by the way, when you meet my mom, could you let her know I turned into a lizard? It did happen. You just didn't feel it. That's all I know. Uh-huh, now an ambulance goes in the emergency entrance. I get it. Ah. Had to kill a doctor to get this, but it seems to be okay. Eventually I will crash. I'll just do it here, save from trouble. They got a bunch of livers stacked up. Free, please take. Yeah, I'll mosey inside. I'm just having a small aneurysm. Yep. I'm gonna go find the nearest rock in the sun to lay on. Man, that is almost as loud as a leaf blower. <laughs> Stunts I've ever seen. Does that kid think he can get away? No, sir. <laughs> He's not trying to get away. Wait, but, uh, wait, there she is. You don't understand. You just don't. We made out a lot. I need a wheat penny and a Glock. A search has begun. Located a young yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like a 12-gauge shotgun. And a licorice whip. Well, we have some very nice models just came in. Very nice guns. I'll be glad to show them. Should I wait a few days and cool off? No, no reason. Okay. Here's a description of the man being sought, whose name is Paul G. Carlson. Mm -hmm. He's 24 years old, Caucasian, about 6 feet tall, weighing 160. Brown hair, Ooh, nice one. blue eyes. Oh, my eyes are going. I keep imagining muscular young men. 
in the vicinity of St. Joseph Hospital. He's believed dressed in tan slacks and a blue sweater. It's a kind of birthday calls, damn it. We got a report on him. The owner of a gun shop says he tried to buy a shotgun, but left without it. Any thoughts, bobbin head baseball kid? I don't think he wants it as a weapon. He wants to kill himself. Too bad, new girlfriend. Why, Miss Nolan? Why can't I drive you home? Because we overheard what Dr. Lawrence said in the other office. That's why patients shouldn't be told anything. That's why. You might be wrong, Mac. Hard to say, chum. He's on a motorcycle. If he wanted to kill himself... No, no, no. Crashes don't always kill people. He knows that. Wrong again, Johnny. Now, he'd try to find some way that was fast and foolproof. Or noisy and very likely to fail. <laughs> being chased by a huge bee. Uh, if, if only we had some kind of lead on him. Anything. Brain has performed an illegal operation and will be shut down. Yeah, I'd like to come up here at night. What? It's one of my favorite places on Earth. What? It's always so peaceful. Why? So quiet. What? <laughs> Thinking hurts. Ow. I can't stand this waiting around. I'm gonna get a different boyfriend. I think it would be better if I went back to the reservation, don't you? I guess so. Although I have reservations about it. Uh, <laughs> well, how will you get back? I borrowed Bud's car. We'll find out who Bud is and return it. I'll phone you if we hear anything. There's a legend of a lizard with a phone. It goes like... <laughs> <laughs> a toad! <laughs> oh well, I'll just grow another one of those. Um, the end, might I suggest? Please. I'm in heaven! Oh no, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Pants are Hagar, and they're horrible. <laughs> oh man, ski conditions suck. Over there, ma'am, is New Mexico, and oh, over there you'll see New Mexico. Enjoy our onboard clavichord concert. Everybody, let's see water balloons on Georgia O'Keefe. I'm fine. I know what I'm doing. Uh, on second thought, maybe I'll just go have the meteor extracted. They found the motorcycle. Where? Up in State Road 44. He took a spill. A guy picked up his hat. The bike is a wreck. But he'd probably walk away all right. They couldn't find him anywhere around the area. Now that road leads up to Sandia Crest. Yes. Of course, that's got to be it. Over the years, I got to know Paul pretty well. The other Beatles were kind of aloof. The one place he went to when he was troubled. The one place where he felt free was Sandia Crest. I feel free! Now... <gasps> Beretta! Actually, most people in New Mexico think about killing themselves two, three times a week. <laughs> yeah, should have brought the wet vac to scoop him up. Okay, oh yeah, there's his normal head injury spot right there. I'm gonna get my car simonized and then I'll be right back. Get your kicks on me. <laughs> right, Pete. Get to Sandia Crest. Now listen. You can actually hear my lunch digesting. I want him captured. But no gunplay. Can we do a passion play? Unless it's absolutely necessary. You can put nightsticks wherever you want, though. That's fine. If 
I catch his death on tape, I can send it to Fox. She even has a tawny car. Okay, careful. Check both ways. Look out. Good. Now I can... Your pants are killing you. Oh, Paul. For a minute I thought you were... Someone I liked. Paul. It's Dad. I know what you intend to do. But you mustn't. Please. You can't. Kathy. I don't know how you found me. But you've got to leave now. My vent is opening. Go! No, Paul. I want to be with you. You can't stay. The sun's going down. My son to you will be ruined. It'll be night soon. If I don't reach the crest. Or another effective dentifrice. Before the moon comes up. Then you can't stay. My other girlfriend is coming to roll down the hill with me. Then it'll be too late for the both of us. Well, you're the lizard. I think it's more too late for you. <coughs> I'm gonna go forage for tighter pants. Lost my Christmas brief. Any sign of a peak? No, sir, but we'll keep checking the area. And you stay put. We'll check down the hill a little further. If anything happens, call me fast. Yes, sir. That bastard. I mean, yes, sir. The sun is rising! A huge flying squid must have just ejected his ink all over the moon there. Paul! <laughs> Paul, help me! What? Paul! <laughs> Paul, please! Uh, try standing up. Help me, Paul, please, help me. <laughs> Paul or Spock, help me. Paul, Paul. This is hard. I should have just bought that shotgun. Paul, help me. Mm -hmm. I hope she says Paul, help me again real soon. Yeah. Paul. Oh, my earth shoes are slippery. Please, Paul, my foot is caught. Help me. Come on, Paul, pizza face. Paul, help me. <laughs> Please! Please! How did we reach the top the first time? That was so easy. But I can palm this rock. Oh. He's just got LA nails. Oh, he's turning into a great NFL receiver. They all have big hands. Big nails. Oh, oh, oh. His hands are big, I know, but they are not yours. They are his own. Ooh, monstrous pigs are attacking. Is the uh, scene over? Okay, I'm headed over to craft services. Hell, let's just shoot up there, see what happens. They've shot two Klieg lights and a gaffer. Ah, what the heck, I could use a little administrative leave. And they bring in a little kid with a huge jar with holes poked in the top. being chased by the Johnson family. <laughs> Things sure are happening over in that direction. Come here, you knuckle knobs. What? Oh, I play too rough, don't I? Oh, God, I'm relaxed. Stupid professor was kicking my seat the whole way. Longbone. He's a cop, he's a rabbi. They're cops. 
Except for the rabbi. I'd help if my thumbs are occupied. What happened? Where's... He got away. Two more men dead. That's our goal. Oh, God. It's too late to help. Not now. It's got to be stopped before there's any more killing. Good luck with that. I'll see ya. This is no time to play the oud. Are you going to try and stop it with a bow and arrow? Not with just any arrow, Mac. I'm going to use this. A really good arrow. That looks like a piece of meteor palm head. It is. I've fashioned an arrowhead out of it. Is that someone's beeper? What are you going to do? Shoot your boyfriend and come on to you. Johnny, tell me! We're fighting something we barely understand, Kathy. Esperanto. The changes that are... A particle of matter from outer space is made in a human being. That's why I'm doing this. If a particle can generate all that energy, mm. a larger piece from the same element might speed up the energy processes. Hey, hands off. Dr. Lord, Paul and I heard you in the hospital. You said Paul would become atomically unstable, that he would... <laughs> it was always inevitable. This way it may happen a little sooner, that's all. Do you always have egg in your beard? Johnny, you can't do it. He's your friend, Paul. Paul is not Paul anymore. He's Super Paul. Seen that. Kathy, he's not as you and I know him. He's smart and funny. Paul is gone. What you see in his place is nothing we know. Nothing human. God, I'm acting. No! Jesus, you're acting all over the place now. And the actors begin abandoning the movie one by one. Gotta pick up the kids from soccer. That poor kid. He's never known my love. He's had a rough time. I'll find him at the all-night fly store. <laughs> the Beatles! Just go around me, man. There you go. Got her. <laughs> I think she said, blah, blah. The arrow caused him to frug. It's cozy watching your boyfriend die. And the monster's red glare. Hey, I'm in a Buggles video. This was inevitable. I'm gonna have a pork chop for dinner. The sad thing is, is he'll miss my stew. Made with corn, green peppers, chicken, onions. Did this community ban outdoor lizard burning? What an idiot, huh? Well, let's go. <laughs> okay, we'll see ya. Kathy, can I hook my thumbs in your belt? Hmm. Well, I learned something from this movie, you guys. Yeah, Crow? Yeah, I, I learned my vomit can rise pretty high, and I can still tamp it down. Hmm. Hang on to that, Crow. It's a, it's a good talent. Yeah. <laughs> There's thumb harnesses on the dashboard for him. Oh, crap. Look at that. I hit his car. Let's go. Hurry on. Go. I see a huge casino. Now, oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh. Servo, what's wrong? What's the matter? Oh, Mike, I was playing with my bow and arrow, you know? <laughs> I was pretending like I was hunting, you know? <laughs> with my bow and arrow, you know? So I shot my arrow, you know? <laughs> Just like I was hunting, you know? <laughs> and I accidentally hit a little satellite. <laughs> well, that's okay, Servo, but I guess you've learned a little lesson about the fragility of satellite communications yeah. <laughs> and the delicate balance of technology. Yeah. <laughs> I have, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. You know what? I think he's going to be okay. Really? I think we just have to feed him and take care of him. He'll be fine. But, but his mom is going to miss him. <laughs> oh, Servo, don't be silly. It's just a satellite. Satellites don't have much. What? Huh? There. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here, here, Mrs. Satellite, for, Hello. for communicate. Go, go. Oh. Uh, big. Oh. Oh. Mm. Mm. And so your anti-static cleaner is the best bet for keeping your brain clean. Oh. Sort of like a surge protector for the old bean. Oh, here you, go. you. <laughs> you know, Brain Guy, you've been so helpful and so supportive of what with me and my new exposed brain and all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hell, I've been there. Oh, you <laughs> certainly... Oh, 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 wait. If I find if I'm going to be away from the brain for more than a few minutes, I like to put the club on it. You can't oh. be too careful these days. Oh, you certainly can't, old buddy. <laughs> you jerk. Take that back, you idiot! Who says you? I really hate to see him getting along. You ignoramus! You stupid head! Troglodyte! You dodo head! Credit risk! You dummy head! <laughs> Oh, wow.